on to our next speakers, okay. Julia and no. just <laughs> Twenty minutes. Okay, so just let's go on. Yeah. Cool. Um, so I think um, what we are talking about now is kind of really very much related to what you heard before, and maybe also in the, in the in two papers before, I think, in some ways. Um, our, our, our title is Reviving the Silenced Voices of the Other, um, but we don't manage to revive them. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about this in more detail later on. Um, so that's basically I'm coming to this I'm coming to this talk as an external examiner, <laughs> an examiner but somehow as an external in some ways because it's actually Julia's research really and um, so we've been talking we've been skyping a lot and I said this sounds very much like voices so this concept of voice I'm working with that in my my dissertation my uh, PhD thesis with a very different focus. Um, I'm working with hip hop in India, uh, but I'm using voices, this concept of voice. Um, so she gave me, she sent me a couple of articles, uh, media pieces, um, and I said, hey, let's do something with voice, and she was kind of excited. So that's why we, we came up with this title, we came up with this talk. Um, so I think Julia will just start to introduce a bit of her research, a bit of the, the material we're talking about, and then we do a small analysis, like a micro analysis of a couple of. Um, sentences for yeah. Um, so it's not really my topic, but it's uh, <laughs> 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 <Right. laughs> But yeah, let's 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 see. So voice talk. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So. Many, like very often, we can read in, uh, in Slovak media that there are no exit data on the number of Roma population in Slovakia. The problem is that there is a consensus on many, many Roma citizens, or probably many Roma citizens, uh, don't declare themselves as Roma. They never, they, they never write like that they, that they feel like being Roma. So according to census, only. Two or less than two percent of Slovak population consider themselves as Roma. On the other hand, there was another research because Ministry of I don't know, or maybe Slovak government has big interest, and and also uh, Slovak people or Slovak media. There is a just big demand on knowing how many Romas are living in Slovakia, how many of them are there, and so there was another research on that uh, when all mayors in all the mayors in Slovakia were asked about the numbers of Roma population living there, and that's how uh, we we came to the numbers that there are that actually Roma um, takes uh, Roma population takes six or eight percent of, of overall Slovak population. So yeah, the question one of the mo one of the questions are is uh, what what are the problems? What are the reasons of not declaring themselves as a Roma? Of course, it's probably a problem of prestige and self alienation. So I would say that Roma citizens are uh, excluded from 
from Slovak population also on quantitative way. And we're gonna more we're going to focus more on qualitative way. Um, here are the numbers like just to get you like a bit a little closer to the Slovak content. Uh, you see that um, Slovak population has one million close in hand then there is a little minority in Hungarian and uh, Roma, but these are the official numbers of the census. Um, then there are some data about the uh, language used in public and language used at home. You can see that this difference is really big. Uh, language used in public, Roma answered, only 36,000 people said that they use Roma language in public, whereas probably four times more at home. So, also um, there were there were some media anal uh, analysis about about Roma uh, right about articles writing about Roma people uh, and Roma minority and uh, organized by for example Roma Care, which is a Roma House one organization and they wrote uh, ten rules for uh, of correct uh, writing about Roma or Romani people. Uh, that, that are addressed to journalists. For example, this trend that um, do not emphasize the ethnicity if it's not needed. Because very often you can see, as, as, and as we saw in the previous presentation also, uh, ethnicity mentioned, mention the full name of Roma, as you usually do, do if, if, the, if the person is part of the majority, you also should do it if the case of the family. Getting information from more experts, not just uh, Peter Polak. Um, Peter Polak is a commissioner of of government for like some department of government for my, of minorities. We don't have a ministry for, for minorities. It's a very large transfer of thing. Every other one uh, interviewing people we know, we get experience, and also uh, give some space to reactions of Roma. And this, this is the, the rule we're going to talk about because it's not stressed in, enough, I think, and it's kind of important. So um, I would just mention a few examples how we how Slovak media call the Roma people. They usually in in, in a to use kind of um, um, correct language. Uh, they started using these expressions. And they became very, very popular and familiar, and and it's not and very referential to that group of of population. So they are called unadaptable citizens or just unadaptable co-citizens, a bit darker co-citizens, our co-citizens, our co-citizens. So we want to stress it now. Our <laughs> our problematic people or just problematic. Um, yeah. So from this perspective. We we took. You have a hand up, please. <laughs> yeah. um, this is just one random article from from Smen, which is the these data about the. Um, it used to be the most read uh, newspaper in Slovakia. Now, for, because half of uh, journalists left from that. These data are not so in Mexico, but, but it used to be the most favorite and the most popular. Uh, yeah, and this article is just random. Yeah, let's focus on it. Yeah, so what, this is a quote from that article. Um, there's a Slovak original and English translation. And by the way, do you want to say something about the English translation? Oh, okay. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Thanks. Uh, the translation was not made by me, but by the professional translator did it for me because I wanted to to minimize my kind of, what to say aim or my attitude because I knew that maybe I would stress some things more when translating. So yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, this is a picture that was in that I mean attached to this article. Um, and this, this picture is taken by the journalist herself, SV. Um, so it's about, um, it's about a town in, I think, 
east and Slovakia, is that right? Um, oh, that's Western. That's Western. Oh, Western, okay, sorry. Um, and basically this journalist goes in and reports about the unadaptable citizens. And maybe you can just read through uh, this article or much of it, or most of it. Um, we would say like, give you like three minutes. <laughs> so <you can> <laughs> yeah, three minutes. <laughs> um, on the left hand side, obviously you see the, the English translation. Um, maybe we can summarize now. Mm. <laughs> because we are at 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. We're good, we're good. We have arrived at page two at least, um, and we give you a small summary, I think, actually, um, so you don't have to read the whole thing. If you want to read it at home, obviously, you can read it home. But I've come up with this kind of kind of plot, right? So this is what actually happens in the story according to how, or how we read it. So we have a journalist in the middle who kind of goes into a small town and does some research. Um, and then we have a, like a narrative plot going on, right? So. Um, that journalist has interviews the residents, right? And the residents tell her, tell her, okay, there's some contact or non-contact or some kind of or avoided contact or something um, between the residents and the undeveloped citizens. So there's some some nuisance. Some somehow these these kind of groups clash in some ways. What the residents do is basically they go and report to the mayor, the auditor. Uh, and these people then, and they also do an interview with the journalists, and these people then um, send these complaints off to higher authorities, the police and the ministries, which will feature the last bit of the article. Um, so the, these, the police and the ministries act, legally act, on, you could say, the unadaptable citizens. They monitor them, they stop and search them, they investigate crimes related to these undoubtable citizens. So that is a, these kind of green lines kind of show there's a direct effect. Now these orange lines over there basically show the context the journalists have with these people or these kind of fi fields of interest or something. And there's obviously no link to the unadaptable citizens. Also the mayor and the auditor in, in one of the um, one of the phrases, I think, said, um, yeah, in 52, for instance, they said, yeah, we reported to the Health and Environmental Protection Office, we reported to the, to the police, we did what we could. In some ways, we could have just gone up and talked to them, right? But they don't, right? So they, they, they rather go, you know, to the institutions and let them act out their laws or whatever. 
So that's why we come up with this kind of idea that there's this kind of divide between the more institutional on this side and the less institutional on that other side. It's kind of hard to say where the mayor and the auditor belong to, right? Is it, are they actually like only in the role of, um, as their official role or whatever, or are they not also residents in some ways? And it comes through in the context in some ways as well. Important thing is also the director is speaking more than mayor, mayor is mayor, answers just once, and auditor, the agenda is for the has nothing to do with these kind of activities. Auditor is just a responsible person of controlling economic <laughs> activity on the city. Right, so we'll focus on like four four sentences, and you can see it against January 9, 30, 31, and 32. Uh, I think on page uh, two. Right, so over here we have we have this kind of idea that these citizens align epistemic, right? There's a, a line of these epistemic staff, they all agree on that one point that in the future in the future there's not going to be any improvement. So there we have like an indexicality of future through improvement and also through the word fear in some ways. Um, they give a clear reason, they give an example um, and situate that in the present, right? Um, uh, oh no, sorry, the 30 is also saying about the future, right? So they give an increase, they, they anticipate an increase of the problematic neighbors, and they say at the moment we are lost, really. we don't actually know how many people live there, and they engage in some kind of estimation. And then this interesting sentence number 32 comes in, which is like, I, I found it really random in some ways. Allegedly, there are two pregnant women so we were trying to figure out how does that sentence make sense in this pa pa paragraph, right? Um, and what, what we thought is there's again an indexicality of future through the pregnant woman, right? Who will bear children in the future, um, who will even include that, I mean, increase the number of people in the household, right? So that, that would be an interpretation. Um, so we were, we were thinking about uh, uh, children a bit more and we're thinking about this kind of the significance of, of being pregnant, right? Or why, why is it even noteworthy that they mentioned? They could have mentioned, oh, there are like four blonde women over there. Or, <laughs> or <laughs> oh, there would be, yeah. Or there were like two green eyed men or something. They don't, right? So they say um, they're, they're two pregnant women. So it's kind of, um, we draw here yeah, this idea of the pre construct that is kind of pre, uh, pre represented as non negotiable knowledge. Um, uh, that this kind of the pregnant woman kind of evokes a voice, an ideologically recognized voice from elsewhere. So this is the idea of the pre-construct by uh, Michel Michel originally. And it's, um, so this voice could be uttering something along the lines of, it is wrong to be a pregnant woman in a house with many other people or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. And when we consider this voice, which is actually not there, it's not on the text surface or something, it's just basically an ideological voice, a pre-constructed voice. Um, all of a sudden, in some ways, this utterance or this sentence makes sense in that context, obviously. Um, and it points to an immoral, dangerous, and inadequate form of paternity um, with which the inclusion of a pregnant woman becomes meaningful in the context. Um, two minutes? Yeah. Let's just skip this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just thinking that if there were really no, no Roma of an interview, then no, no comment with that. What is it? Could we talk about some kind of media genocide? I know it's very provoking, but if genocide starts with excluding some, some part of population from public spaces, what is the media space? Could we, could we really use this term? That's a question for our discussion, I think. But it's... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now that was quick. <laughs> Thanks a lot, and we have uh, time to quit. May I discuss? Yeah, there was something missing, right?
the silence voices? So we were thinking about the this idea of uh, the, uh, the silence voice. There's no voice represented by uh, no voice of the Roma, right? There's no representation of it in the whole article. So everyone seems to be talking about them. Mm -hmm. They have estimations, they have kind of specific ideas what they do, what they don't do, what's, what's the role of the children or the women is, but no one actually asks them, right? So it's a silenced voice, it's like an excluded voice, we would say. Um, we can reconstruct it if you want, but we don't really get at the voice, right? So it's like, at the, at the beginning of this, we were thinking about like having like this kind of poly polyphonic analysis of, of but it doesn't really, it doesn't really work in this article in some ways because, I mean, obviously we can create all these kind of different voices, but you will never get at um, like a re truly representative voice of the Roma. There was just one evidence. Oh yeah. Just one lady that she was thinking about how, uh, the reasons of their activity that she was doing. She yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, uh, I don't know why they uh, I don't know why they were all these rubbishes because yeah, it's number twenty six. Yeah, because, 26. yeah, because some maybe they don't have anything to eat. So that was kind of the only oh. only fraction we found <coughs> would say like actually someone's thinking about from their position. Yeah, yeah. thinking from their position, even though that might be wrong or right, we don't know, right? But it's kind of a kind of an empathy, right? Yeah. You can identify new strategies. Maybe, there. maybe a political question. Uh, you're criticizing that they don't have a voice, but what you are doing is doing the same. You're talking about them. Why? Have you gone That's there? why I mentioned my juicy salad at the beginning. Okay. But yes, yes, you're right. I think the first step in this is just identifying media scape and identifying the silencing and the othering going on. Obviously this is it's not like you know trying to change the world or something with this paper. Um, but I mean yeah for, for us I think for you and for me as well it's like a kind of a basic empirical evidence for going out and doing something. Yeah. Something to present to journalism so that's not Um, I'm just yeah I'm wondering the, the last question you asked like uh, could we call it like a media genocide? Um, to me that seems pretty strong. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, well, it's definitely good for polemical reasons, but I wonder whether a term like symbolic violence would not suffice for this to this kind of thing, or like just ex just exclusion as we called it yeah. before. Because I think the danger of using a term like genocide for something purely symbolic seems to me to, to broaden the term for things that are less serious than actual genocide in terms of killing people. But I don't know, but that's more question I suppose like the just the sense. It's just my yeah. no, thanks for this. I think it's really uh, I, yeah, I, I, I agree with you, it was just I know it's really strong and too strong, but in some kind of context, it it has its own goal, I would say. And because I'm teaching journalists and I'm, uh, about how to write about my priests and so on, that's the that's the context where I use it. Exclusion, social exclusion, they are sick of it because they they hear it every day. <laughs> that's empty already, you know. So that's why. One of the practical things, mostly a kind of implementation. Sorry, I was right. I was thinking about just pointing out pregnant women. It means a kind of dehumanization attempt. You know, it makes, quote unquote, those people appear like a whole pack living in the wild. You know? They live together and at some point they breed and multiply. I think that's 
because you were asking why, because you can sound like a very possible explanation, but I think it's a bit more than If you think of it that with the architecture of the plate, or of the articles, there is just a picture of the house that is dirty, and inside there is some, all that happening, exactly. and around there are just these voices talking, and inside there are, they estimate there are from 10 to most, to most, uh, to almost 30, 10 to 30, you know, up there. and moreover, moreover, there are two very many guests. Yes. And you could be writing about cats or dogs. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know if you are aware about the British media who invented a joke against the Roma people, Romanian Roma people, hint the, the gypsy. So you can kill on the game all the gypsy you don't like. So this is cynical, racial, everything. <laughs> but <laughs> by the way, I propose. So, hint to the gypsy. I'll tell you more about this. was in connection with the liberalization of the market uh, last year for Romanians and Bulgarians. In Germany and Great Britain. So, this would so be symbolic genocide. Yeah. They were afraid of the number of the, the 29 million Romanians, which is far more <laughs> of gypsy. Invade. It was a hysteria about the invasion of Romanian and Bulgarians in the Ethiopian case. So we <laughs> we are familiar with such uh, discourse. Think, yeah, I think it's really interesting that we, I, this article, one of the couple of articles we viewed, this was actually the most politically correct one. Mm -hmm. um, there were there were others which were talking about hygiene and like about, like really horrible stuff. Um, or we were saying that, oh, finally, good news about Slovak Roma that nobody would expect. And that was about some good results at school in Sheffield. Of, yeah. And that was the title, you know. So, 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 I, so I think it's not, it's not that this journalist is really trying to create this image of the wolf pack or this dehumanization. Yeah, yeah. Or less, maybe, mm -hmm. but I think still, I think still, these kind of things come through to little words like, but like, um, uh, what's the other words, according to. And so we, we kind of identified all these kind of little markers which kind of align the voices to specific people, but it doesn't really, so you don't really see where the one voice ends and another voice begins, right? So it's a blurring of voices. And this does some ideological work because you don't actually know whose who's voice it is and what it's represented. It just that they all kind of agree on yeah. something which is introspective truth. Oh, so yes. uh, intuitively. Intuitive. Yeah. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, we, have, <laughs> we now have very uh, two, uh, five very quick minutes for a break. Um, <laughs> I recommend you not to go downstairs because we might disturb people and Yanni will prepare his presentations and so if you just stay here for five minutes and then be back. <laughs>